Well, The Paying Guest is set in 1922 in a grandish house in Camberwell, South London. The house is owned by uh, genteel Mrs Ray and her spinster daughter Frances, and they've been obliged to take in lodgers, the paying guests of the title, and they are Leonard and Lillian Barber, a young couple um, from what was known snootily at the time as the Clark class. In other words, they're distinctly lower middle class. The novel charts the entangling of their lives as they negotiate living in the house together and sets them along a path that has um, unexpected shocking and ultimately tragic consequences for them. Well, like my other novels, The Paying Guest is a historical novel and there are some, some twists and surprises. It's very much about ordinary lives being plunged into the unexpected, the eruption of passion and drama into domestic life. I think we have loads of stereotypes about the 20s and they tend to be, from the end of the decade really, they tend to be about flappers, you know, bright young things, Jeeves and Worcester, all that sort of thing. And what surprised me when I went to the earlier part of the decade is how different it is from that stereotype. The city of London itself would have been scarred by Zeppelin raids. The number of motor vehicles on the streets doubled between 1920 and 1922. It was a city really in rapid transition, which was one of the things that really um, attracted me to it, I think. I really enjoy the research side of writing a historical novel. And so for me, with this book, I read books about the period. I read books from the period. Novels are good for giving you a sense of the idiom of the period. Diaries and letters are good too for that. Oral histories I looked at when I could. It is hard to hear a period, but once you begin to catch little fragments of it and put them all together, you begin to really get a sense of it. With this novel, I really wanted to write about, you know, sort of ordinary people's lives, people not at the, the heart of kind of metropolitan jazz age London, but people perhaps in the suburbs. And Camberwell in South London really interested me. By the 20s, the area was rather down at heel, and Champion Hill itself was a, was a bit of an island of upper middle class life, surrounded by this more sort of Clark class of people. And I liked the idea of, of people living side by side like that. Houses and buildings often play quite a central role in my books. I think that's particularly true with the paying guests because, of course, once the two families are established in the house, loyalties begin to shift and once an intimacy begins to grow between Francis and Lillian, the house becomes a much more charged space. What you can overhear, what you can glimpse, you know, there's a lot of looking at the staircase, a lot of listening at walls, just what's going on, who's with whom in which space and what does that mean. At the heart of the paying guests is the relationship, the growing and complex intimacy between Frances and Lillian, the, the daughter of the house and the lodger. And early on in the novel they become friends and they have their first kind of date, as it were, in Ruskin Park. They take a picnic to the park and they sort of idly climb the bandstand and perch there for a while and have one of their first sort of honest conversations together. The bandstand became a very sort of fitting location for me for their relationship because, you know, bandstands, you're very much on display, but at the same time with the roof and front Lillian's carrying a parasol behind them, there's an odd intimacy to it. And I like the idea that there are these two women sort of hiding in plain sight, in a sense. It became very obvious to me that it was at heart a love story. I think I resisted it at first. I felt it was that was made it a small thing. I kept thinking, oh, it's just a romance, you know, Francis and Lillian. But I realised that it's thoroughly about their relationship, what happens to, to a loving, intimate relationship when it's put under an awful lot of pressure, pressure of guilt and shame and uh, moral responsibility. That's, that's really kind of what the novel's all about, I think, by the end of it.